Thank you very much for the most amazing lecture. It was truly fantastic because it wasn't just informative, it was also enormously entertaining. <laughs> and um, I'm sure that everybody in the audience has got, I'm sorry, I have to say this, some very burning questions. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so we're going to... did there. <laughs> so, so I think we'll just spend the next five or ten minutes or so um, if people have questions. Um, could you raise your hand and somebody will bring you a microphone and please um, wait until you've got the microphone in your hand before you say anything. So... This one here. Hi, I'm probably in danger of just throwing random scientific words together, but um, is there any connection between volcanology and the current climate change that we're really dealing with now, or is it actually the other way around that you're learning more about volcanology and how it's affecting? Um, there's, there's a lot of things to say, I suppose, about that. Um, we know that volcanoes, in a relatively subtle way, react to other external forcings in the, in the Earth system. So when we came out of the last glacial maximum, for example, when the glaciers receded, if you go to um, places like Chile or Iceland, particularly in Iceland, actually, you see, quite a, you see a spike in the volcanism rate um, because of the, the changes in pressure in the Earth's crust. So there's, as, there's as, that aspect as well. Over longer time scales, um, things like the carbon dioxide coming out of volcanoes can impact in terms of longer term climate. Um, in terms of current climate change, I don't think there's anything really that's going to get us out of it in terms of vol volcanoes, unless uh, Pinatubo was going off every year. And of course, people have suggested by the analogue to Pinatubo that we should put some man-made aerosols up into the stratosphere. In fact, there was a, a Royal Society report on this, this very thing a few years back. Um, I don't, you know, and that, that, that's come out of the kind of inspiration of volcanoes, I guess. I don't think it's personally a very good idea myself. You're kind of tampering with the incoming radiation to sort out the problem with the outgoing radiation. And you have the whole hydrological cycle in between. So, uh, so there, there's many things that can help us in terms of understanding. We can also test climate models against volcanic forcings like Pinatubo, for example. Um, but, uh, but so th there are certainly links, although in some cases they're, they're a little subtle. I would like to ask a question. So you showed all these massive um, uh, you know, explosions and, and eruptions, uh, but they were many years ago. So the question I have is, you know, are we going to have another period of really severe volcanic activity? Or, or is the Earth cooling down? Were they just there in the past and they're no longer going to happen? Or are they, is it likely that they might come back again? And if so, why? Um, so you think, meaning large igneous provinces? Yes, yeah, so like that. We think these are, these are driven from relatively deep inside the Earth, mm -hmm. so sort of areas of hot material rising up from relatively deep inside the Earth, perhaps the core mantle boundary, we're not, we're not quite sure. Uh, but these, these plumes rising up in the, in the Earth. The Earth is cooling down, so over, over very long time scales you might see that less, but I think that there's still enough uh, energy in the old girl to probably at some stage in the, in the geological future give us another large igneous province. But remember, the gaps between them are incredibly long, yes. so uh, we don't have any evidence that that's about to, uh, that's about to hit us along with Brexit. So we're safe <laughs> for a little while. <laughs> safe for a little while yet. Any more questions? There's one down here. And another one here, if you bring it here. One here. How, oh, sorry. How easy is it to use historic uh, data on volcanoes to predict sort of how often they're going to come? Does it happen like that, or is it completely random? Sorry, I didn't quite catch can that. You, can you use sort of historic volcano eruptions to predict how often they will come in the future, or can you not predict it based on historical? Yeah, so in, when we have good historical records, they could be really key in terms of... So if, if a volcano is showing unrest, one of the first things we do is try to understand what it's done in the past in order to make a, at least a, a best guess at what we, what we will think will happen in the future. And if we have good historical records, then certainly that's a, that's a real gift to, to draw upon. It's very patchy, so some areas of the world you have excellent historical records, um, Santorini, for example, we've got a great, a great record of, of, of what's been going on. In other, other areas, we really only have a, a very recent snapshot. There's a question here. Uh, 
Thanks, that was great and so engaging. Um, <clears throat> my question was about the, you showed us how the atmosphere changes after the volcano and the gases in the atmosphere and how they spread and the temperatures. And the, your top left-hand picture of the world was normal. I just wonder how you work out what normal is. So <laughs> what, how do you establish the baseline? Um, so time averaging, and, and you're right, you, uh, you, you would sort of look for a relatively volcanically quiet period. Um, and everything's relative, so you are picking, you, you, you make your colours dark to show the change. So, uh, so, so you're right that you could have some background aerosol in the stratosphere in any case. But I think that, yeah, I, th I think that, I can't, uh, that slide uh, was, is a composite image of several years, it may be even 10 years. So it's kind of taking an average, if you like, which sort of smooths out the variability that you see in something like the stratosphere. There's another question here, and I think that might be the last one. I wonder if you could tell us about the connection between earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Um, I mean, there certainly have been some in, um, but, but is that just chance, uh, or do you always need to have an association of earthquake and a volcanic activity? Um, well, in, in, I suppose in the first order sense, they're, they're both tectonic phenomena. So they're associated with, not, not all volcanoes are, but they're, or not all earthquakes are, but they're largely associated with plate boundaries. So they tend to co-locate. So that's sometimes why you sort of have that, that that connection there because you have the two plates moving in, a, in relation to each other and that both causes the, the earthquake and causes, uh, causes the volcanism. Um, we did some work, uh, this was part of Seb Watt's PhD, we did some work looking at the historical records in Chile of volcanic eruptions and in Chile you get very, very large earthquakes and it's quite famous because Darwin went there and there was an, there was an earthquake and then some volcanoes went off and he made that link. And so we did some more detailed st statistical analysis on that. And you do see some, some statistically significant association there. But it's not quite as clear as saying the, the, the earthquake happened and so the, the, the eruption was triggered. You have to be, have your volcano kind of on a trajectory towards an eruption. And then the earthquake kind of shakes it up a bit and might weaken the crust or might uh, shake that gas like the Coke bottle again. Um, and uh, it's all about Coke with me. It should be champagne, shouldn't it? Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, and shakes it up like that, and, and then you get bubble nucleation, and that can push it on its way. So it's hard to sort of say, oh, that volcano was triggered by that earthquake. Okay, I think we have to finish because um, I've been told we have to finish at half past seven. So what I'd like to do now is thank Professor Nother again, and then I'm going to present her with this, the medal. So. And so, on behalf of the Royal Society, many, many, many congratulations for winning this prestigious Rosalind Franklin Award. And here is the thank medal you. itself. And here is the scroll. Oh, and you. there is a check on its way, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That was totally